I remember when I was a little young lad out there back in college when I was out there catching footballs and running track, wondering how I was gonna make big money if I didn't make it pro in either of these sports. Well, I made it pro in both sports, so uh, yeah. But like most people, they don't teach you how to make money in high school or in college. And today I'm gonna give you five tips on how to make your money work for you by investing into the stock market. This video is for beginners and anybody else that's trying to grow their knowledge about the stock market on how to make your money work for you. I'm Zeke and welcome to the Dream Green Show. This episode is brought to you by Weeble. Sign up now by clicking the link down in the description, deposit $100 and receive two free stocks valued up to $1,400. So that's tip, hey, six tips. That's tip one on how to get some free money just by signing up for Weeble and getting two free stocks. Hey, there you go. The link is down in the description. But enough talking. Let's go ahead and get straight into the video. All right, guys, here we are on Robinhood. This is my $27,000 account. It did not grow overnight. And, and this is what I want to tell you guys about. Tip number one is staying consistent. I did not start off with a $27,000 account. I started off very, very small. And by being consistent into the stock market, I was able to grow it to $27,000 over time over the last couple of years okay guys if we look at my all-time chart i'm still up 22 percent so i'm doing pretty good on the investment of my money now what i mean by stay consistent is that you don't have to deposit twenty five thousand dollars to start investing into stocks like you had to do back in the day because of uh, all the fees now you can invest fifty dollars a week every single week and invest into the stock market me personally i'm gonna tell you my true story i started investing fifty dollars a month into the stock market $50 every single month into the stock market. Might not seem like a lot, but me at the time, I did not know anything about stocks. So $50 a month into the stock market until I eventually got the hang up. That $50 turned into $50 a week into the stock market. So I was investing $200 a month into the stock market. And I started investing $200 a month into the stock market for about a year and a half. All I did was $200 a month into the stock market. And I, I started to see my compound interest grow. The more money I had in there, the quicker my account will grow. If I only deposit $50, and um, by the end of three months, I might have $55, which was pretty cool. But when I started to, to deposit $200 every single month into the stock market, I could start seeing more profit coming. $100 here, an extra $100 there, an extra $200 here. I was like, wow, this is really growing my account. So I really started to dig in deep in the stock market and started to learn to trade, and I started a YouTube channel. From there, I really wanted to know everything about the stocks, and then once I got the hang of it, I started to invest $200 a week into the stock market, and now I'm investing $800 a month. So $200 a week, or $800 a month, I invest into the stock market, which was have led me to a $27,000 account. So being consistent in the stock market helps you when the price is high, and it helps you when the price is low. It helps you dollar cost average your price point, because if you're buying the dip at a good price, when the stock goes back up, you're gonna have an amazing gain just from buying the dip, other than always buying it when the price is high. Always buying stock when it's doing good, it's not a good look, but when you also buy it when it has a dip and get it on sale at a great value, then you are buying the dip and getting it at a great price. What I mean by buying the dip, if we're taking a look at Facebook, uh, buying it at $210 would have been cool, but once it got all the way down, you could say, hey, Facebook is not, is not doing good, I'm not gonna buy. That is a good time to buy Facebook down at $146 cause it might not ever reach $146 again. And then over time, Facebook ended up bouncing back to $281. So if you buy a company that you believe in, buy the dip when the price go down, okay? Tip number two for beginner investors is that you can now buy fractions of shares. So don't let the stock price of big companies like Amazon scare you off. You can see that Amazon is at $3,294 and you'd be like, I would never ever own a share of Amazon. It costs way too much. Well, on Robinhood, you could buy fractions of a share of Amazon. And as you guys can see, I own 1.27 shares of Amazon. And I'm gonna show you guys how to buy fractional shares of Amazon. If you are just investing $50 a week or whatever you invest in every single week into the stock market, all you have to do is hit trade, hit buy, and then at the top right corner, you wanna hit buy in dollars. 
and now you can just buy $25 of Amazon every single week for, for the rest of the year and that way now you're starting to build up equity into Amazon until eventually this great company is going to explode, keep on exploding, keep on exploding and now you're not missing out on the this great tech company, this great online consumer company you're, now you're not missing out on that boom just because you didn't have the $3,000 initially to invest into Amazon. So that's tip number two, don't be scared of the price. Now you can buy in fractional shares. Tip number three is to buy ETFs. If you don't know where to put your money, you don't know what to put your money in, and you don't know what company is gonna do great in the future and what company is gonna do horrible, and you're just like, hey, hey, I don't know where to put my money. Invest into ETFs. They are exchange traded funds. That means that this is a company that buys many different stocks and other companies and put it in one portfolio so that you have diversification across the entire field by, by just buying these couple of ETFs. Today, I'm gonna show you two ETFs that's very dependable. They're very boring. By boring, that means they're not gonna shoot up and they're not gonna shoot down. They're gonna have consistent growth over time. These two ETFs is VOO, which tracks the S&P 500, and QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ. So let's dive into that right quick. All right, here we are on Seeking Alpha, ticker symbol VOO is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. If we take a look at this ETF, they are split it up between 24% in technology, 14% in healthcare, 12% in financials, and 10% is consumers. If we look at their top 10 holdings, this is the top 10 holdings that they have in their portfolio. They have Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google A, Google C, Johnson & Johnson, Berkshire Halfway, PG and Visa. So they have some pretty big bangers inside of their top 10 holdings. I'm pretty sure that you guys can name and list every single one of these companies, if not have used one of the products from one of these top 10 companies which shows that this is a very dependable um, ETF that buys and invests into 515, right here, 515 different holdings. So you're not just buying one company when you invest into VOO, you are investing into over 515 different companies, which is a broad, it casts a broad net so that you're not just investing into one, you're investing into over 500, and therefore your money is more diversified and it's harder it's, you, it's not impossible, but it's harder to lose money this way. The other one that we're gonna look at is ticker symbol QQQ. It tracks the NASDAQ, it's at $283. And their top is tech, communication, healthcare, and consumer, all right? Their top 10 holdings look similar to VOO, but it's a little different. Their top 10 is Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Google A, Google C, Tesla, NVIDIA, PayPal and Netflix. I'm pretty sure that you guys use most of these in this list and they have over 100 different holdings in their portfolio. Now, statistically speaking, QQQ has outperformed VOO in the last 10 years. So that's something to think about right there. One could be overvalued, one could be undervalued, but these two ETFs, I don't think that you could do anything wrong by investing into these two companies. But once again, they're very boring, which is good, all right? So it's not gonna shoot up super high, it's not gonna shoot down super low, it's just gonna have consistent and steady growth because stocks go up. <laughs> that's, that's so funny. All right, and that's gonna bring us to tip number four. Invest into what you use. Invest into what you use. If you have an iPhone and you invest into Apple products, you got their, their MacBook and you like the Apple products, buy Apple stock, all right? Don't go out there and buy some, 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 some upcoming penny stock. That's not an investment, that's a gamble. Buy companies that you actually use, all right? If you drink Coke every day, buy some Coke stock. If you eat McDonald's every day, buy some McDonald's stock. Buy companies that you actually trust and companies that you actually use. If you've been sitting at home during this pandemic and ordered 10 things off of Amazon, why haven't you invested to Amazon? Why haven't you invested into Amazon? Make Am if you're gonna give Amazon your money, you might as well make money off of Amazon too, right? Exactly, guys. If you wanna invest into these tech companies, if you're a big tech guy, big computer guy, invest into Intel, invest into AMD, invest into Nvidia, invest into products that you use. Don't go out there and say, hey, I think this company could blow up in the future. Let me put all of my money into this company and then the company doesn't do anything, right? That's, that's not, that's not, that's not, it's not, it's not smart, it's just not smart. So just invest into companies that you use. Trust me, it's going, because A, you know this company. 
B, you're a consumer of this company product and C, that, that advertisement is so in, in your face is that the whole world would know this company. If you're at home and, and you did you cut the cord and all you have is a subscription of Hulu and Netflix, why not invest into Disney? Why not invest into Netflix? You're a user of that product, so that is the smart thing to do other than just not do anything at all. So invest into companies that you actually consume. And the last one is tip number five. Now with about 5% of what you invest every day, maybe even a little less than 5%, now you can invest into your risky stocks. You might not be a believer of Tesla, but you see Tesla stock doing pretty good, so buy some Tesla stock with about 5% of your portfolio. You might see an emerging stock IPO like Airbnb coming up. You might not like Airbnb, you might like staying at hotels, you might not be a consumer of Airbnb, but you heard about it and you know how they make money and you, you might not like Airbnb, but you heard about it. You could invest about 5% of your portfolio into upcoming IPOs. Now with the 5%, you could be very risky, as risky as you want with your 5% because it's only about 5% of your portfolio, 95% of it is, a, is in about 70% of it is in ETFs, the other 25% of it is in um, companies that you use. So the last 5%, you, you can invest into risky stocks. Yes, you could go and have your fun. You'd be like, hey, I bought this stock before it even blew up. 5% of it in there and now it's worth half of my portfolio. So you don't have to miss out on all the fun of trading in the stock market. You can also have fun with trading in the stock market. So yes, go on ahead, take that 5% and invest into whatever that you wanna invest into. You don't have to be cookie cutter boring, make the stock market boring. Just take that 5%, have fun with it, okay? Go out there and make some money. But yeah, guys, that, that that's my five tips for beginners on how to get started in the stock market. Be consistent, invest into fractional shares into companies that you probably can't afford. Invest into uh, companies that you, you are consumers of, that you are proud to be an owner of their products, and then go out there, go out there, get you some ETFs so you can have ownership of over 500 different companies and then have fun in the stock market by investing into what you want to invest to, which are 5%. That's how I got started. I now have a $27,000 account. To me, that is very big. To other people out there, that is a very small account. That is shocking. I mean, I mean, hopefully one, I, I plan to one day have a $100,000 account. So I'm gonna to continue to invest into the stock market and keep you guys updated. If you, want, if you guys wanna see my full portfolio, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button on this video and subscribe to my channel so when I do my full portfolio reveal, you guys don't miss out on that video. But other than that, I'm Zeke, bringing you the Dream Green Show, and I'm out. Peace.